In this week's episode of Exhibitionists, we are investigating the idea of self-care. And I found music. I recorded. I purged. 400 velvet paintings. It was probably the largest collection in North America. Softness and fragility and sensitivity. And I think that's something that we very much need right now. And we'll learn how to make an explosively cool bath bomb. <laughs> Hello and welcome to CBC Arts Exhibitionists. I'm Amanda Paris. Light up a candle, sit back, relax, and take the next half hour to immerse yourself in an art bath. We begin our journey with the story of a man who one day fell seriously ill. In order to treat this illness, Rick Smith began taking a medication which made him see colors more vividly. With this amplified sight, Rick's eyes were drawn to a painting on velvet. He bought that painting and immediately began to feel better. So he bought another, and another, and another, until he had hundreds. Take a look at what happened next. Elvis and I got a lot in common, I think, so I bought him. And he got hooked, and he couldn't stop collecting them. My goal was 40, and I ended up getting close to 400 velvet paintings, which according to people in the know, is probably the largest collection in North America. Today we are uh, at the Glenbow Museum in the amazing velvet experience. These paintings are really interesting because they come from one collection, uh, which was collected by Rick Smith. Honestly, I love velvet paintings. <laughs> I might be alone in that to a certain extent. They are uh, kind of the people's paintings, you know. They were made for everyone. They were accessible, they were cheap, uh, and they have some pretty hilarious imagery on them as well. Almost 17 years ago, and I was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, I was on an awful lot of medications, and I don't mean that jokingly. Art became really uh, exciting for me, but it kept me alive, literally. Rick has said that these paintings really helped him through a very difficult time in his life, so I think he feels like he's on the other end of that, and he's willing to share them with the rest of Calgary. The big thing that's happening uh, at the end of today's event, uh, every guest will be able to take home their very own velvet painting. It's a fun hobby. I said it gave me something to do when I was very ill and thankful for that. Our exhibitionist in residence this week is Gladys Cruz, and her digital creations will probably raise a few eyebrows, but that's a good thing. Gladys wants her work to spark conversations about sex. She hopes it will remind people to prioritize their sexual health and encourage their self-exploration. I'll let Gladys tell you more. Hi there, my name is Gladys, and I'm an emerging Toronto artist, and I'm your exhibitionist in residence this week. So I would describe my work as being very playful, very vibrant, but also a little risque. And so you're going to look into my gifts and they are just based on sexual innuendos. And then you'll see my many perversions. And if you're interested more in my work, check out www.gladyscruise.ca and also check out my Instagram, Gladys Cruise Art. And thanks for watching. When I'm not guiding you through the Canadian art scene with exhibitionists, I also host a weekly R&B music show on CBC Radio called Marvin's Room. I've played music by this next artist in a number of episodes. Tika's sound is soulful and haunting, but I didn't know where all that emotional depth came from until I watched this. Take a look. I live to feel because I spent so long not feeling at all. I was molested when I was 11 years old and soon after witnessed my own mother face abuse. That's what started my story. 
I was really good at erasure, and I was just going, existing. I worked my entire career being the master of what I do for other people, and I wore that mask very well. It was in the thick of my depression that I felt like nothing. After years, I finally took a step back, and I found music. I recorded. I purged. Art was the path to my vulnerability. It was in this isolation of the studio that music became the vehicle to speak my truth. My lyrics are dark because my reality has been, but my sound stays in the light because people should know that this light is always attainable. My favorite part of the journey thus far is being able to face myself. Tika, mm. songs in the key of fields. So, okay, so up next we have an artist and how to make a bath bomb. But hey. it's time to make take baths. Huh? Okay, three, two. We often think of self-care as exercise or meditation, but for many, art can be a way to heal. For comic book artist Vaughn Allen, drawing became a way of not only coping with painful memories, but finding a place to put them. I'll let him tell you more. When I was young, I never thought I could be an artist at all. I was very insecure, very, very shy. I didn't really start drawing until I was 26. For the most part, I just never thought I would be able to do anything like this. My childhood was my childhood. Mom was mom. I didn't really think anything of it. I knew we were poor, but later on, I started to realize that these experiences I had were different. And I thought, hey, in a story, this might be interesting to explore. Road is autobiographical. I fictionalized the gender of the main character, Marie. My mom was mentally ill, which is something I didn't quite realize when I was uh, very small. I didn't see what warning signs that were probably there that she was having trouble. It was tough. The spaghetti incident scared the crap out of me. She sort of realized that she was out of control and she couldn't reel it back in. She actually wound up getting herself checked in to the hospital. It's tough because at the one hand, I wanted to show that these events happened. It's very human, sad, and scary without placing blame. When you're going through difficult times, you find escape that sort of keeps you sane. I found that through comics, if things were rough with my mom, this was a bit of escape from that. Later on, I started to realize that I wanted to draw. This is something, you know, anybody can learn to do with the, um, with the sort of the right amount of time, with the right amount of effort. Certainly the right amount of failure because you fall on your face a lot. The biggest step of breaking down the script into the actual graphic novel was the thumbnailing. I had no idea what size to draw these at. I tried like small, tiny little thumbnails. I tried big, almost full page thumbnails. I kept trying different things, feeling like terror on how I was going to do this. Each page could take multiple days. I literally lettered the panels. Why? I would never do anything like this now. <laughs> As time went on, I got better at it. I'm using a lot more digital tools to help with visualization and what have you, and also to make it so much faster. I think my mom, if she could have seen the story, I think she would have liked it. I suspect her recollection and my recollection would be different. 
I think she would have liked the passion of it. I think she would have liked the tone of it quite a bit. And I think she would have found it touching. I never stopped drawing, so what I've been doing really is developing my craft. I've come a long way. The short stories are great, but I like long-form comics. You get to know the characters and you get set up with some initial expectations of what a story might be as the reader falls in love with the characters and the situations of the story. Have you checked out our website yet? If you haven't, you're missing out. There are so many amazing stories to discover from art shows on social media to videos that will change the way you think about photography. And you can check out my weekly column, as well as all the great things we gather from across the CBC universe. You can find it all at cbc.ca slash arts. Nothing says self-care like taking a hot bath. So with that in mind, grab your muffin tray and some baking soda, because right now we are gonna learn how to turn that bath into fizzy, exploding art. But honestly, who even takes baths anymore? Okay, so, okay, a judge. Um, so we have Hannah Shafi and a filmmaker I met at the St. John's International Oh, you Women's... told me you saw this, you really liked it. I love it. this one, okay, yes. Great. Okay, so in three, nice. two. The following program may contain coarse language. Viewer discretion is advised. Home is supposed to be a place of refuge and respite. But what happens when you just don't love the place that you live? Morgan Jones is a film student from the University of Regina who made a short film inspired by her mom's dissatisfaction with where they live and her artistic way of dealing with it. I've been here for 11 years, and I don't much care for it out here. Is there anything you like about living here? Um...
so 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 I sewed so and I've sewed I could probably embroider a thousand hoops so 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 So, living in Estevan, I don't know, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere. I've tried to make it friendly and homey and a place for my family to come and enjoy. I try to incorporate my own little quirky style in here with a lot of handmade, homemade things. So I put swear words on my embroidery, but make them look pretty at the same time. Is there anything you like about living here? I I do, I do like it. I like that it's home. Do you ever feel like you need a break from the internet, from Twitter trolls to mean YouTube comments? There can be a lot on the World Wide Web that can make you feel bad. That's probably why people turn to this next artist who has over 20,000 followers on Instagram. Hannah Shafi, AKA Frizz Kid, is a journalist and artist who has a loyal following from all over the world because she uses her online platform to share her own brand of positivity. Take a look. People are listening. And sometimes it's hard to, to realize that until you actually put something out there and you hear all these people respond. It's like magical. I started my art Instagram fairly recently. I started it the fall of 2015. After I had made the uh, Healing is Not Linear piece, which is like by far the most popular one that I have, it just like blew up. And seeing people's responses and seeing how intimately and intensely people were connecting with my art, it just really motivated me to make more of those because seeing this, this embrace of softness and fragility and sensitivity, and I think that's something that we very much need right now, especially sort of in a culture of internet trolling and calling people oversensitive and making fun of people who need safe spaces. I mean, seeing people embrace that need for safety and for being personal very much inspired me to continue to make the affirmation series. Many of the people in my pieces look like me. I do that on purpose. I, I like the idea of inserting myself in my art. Of course, there are some that the people look nothing like me because I really value representation. So there's a lot of pieces uh, where I've included body types and ethnicities and physical disabilities that I don't have, but that I want people to be able to see so that they can see themselves in my art just as much as I see myself in my art. I think just the ability of having such immediate access to people is a form of power that artists of color and artists of just several marginalized identities never had before. I mean, as we've seen from mainstream arts, art scenes, it's predominantly white and male and hetero and cisgender. And so we've seen this sort of um, intense surplus of uh, young artists of color and young queer artists and 
feminist artists who um, have sort of taken social media by storm and produced all this art that is just getting out there and again like immediately getting into people's uh, lives because of how uh, interconnected social media sort of um, makes us. <laughs> I feel like a life of me not doing this, it wouldn't actually be me in that life. Um, I can't separate myself from those things that I love and the, the art that I create. There is, there's, no, there's no taking that out of me. So it, it's just, it's, I guess, as natural as breathing. If there is a Canadian artist you think we should showcase, send us a message on Twitter or Facebook. Our handle is at CBC Arts. Thank you for joining me on this whirlwind journey of art and creativity. I'll be back again next week with even more artists from Fogo to Faro. Peace. Awesome show, way to go. Thanks. I love the idea of art as self-care. Yeah, I see you've really gone into it with the face mask. And I got stuff. So what okay. what, what kind of things do you do for self-care? Uh, it's really simple, like I write, I paint sometimes, I read. Next time we paint, I have some chamomile tea, okay. some bath salts, and some Himalayan air. I, I don't feel anything, it's just an empty It's air bottle. from the Himalayas. Okay. Okay, and so what else Well, what else do you want to do for self-care? I have other things. I, I, I just keep it simple. I just, you know, eat some comfort food and uh, keep it quiet. Yeah, keep it quiet.